ça roule. Ok, Lionel, Lionel Briand, good morning. So Lionel, uh, you wrote in IEEE software that software engineering research is stuck in the mud. Is it like string theory uh, and theoretical physics? Are we really stuck in the mud? Well, uh, I don't know if we are stuck in the mud, but uh, what is clear from many indicators is that we have a limited impact. And that impact is particularly limited if you take into account the uh, genuine importance of the field in, in most industry sectors. We should have a much larger impact than we have. And there are many reasons for that that I guess we're going to discuss. Okay, so why stuck in the mud? Is there any evidence of that? It, it looks like there's a lot of software engineering well, research and the public at large may think that all the good thing that software is giving is the direct result of that research. Yeah, I'm only talking about software engineering research, not software engineering industry. Software is playing an important role. There are many systems that play a critical role and that save people's lives, that support entire industries, that make our cars safer, uh, that's for sure. So, but I'm talking about software engineering research. And uh, the evidence, of course, is complex. First, it varies a great deal from country to country. I've seen, for example, recent figures from the US. In the US, software engineering uh, research funding in NSF has been flat for 10 years. And software engineering research funding in all other agencies has basically evaporated. Uh, in uh, Canada, for example, they closed down at NRC, the software engineering department. And software engineering funding in Canada is not that great anymore, but it used to be. Uh, but of course, you have contra-examples. In Sweden, software engineering funding is still pretty good because there is an industry association that is lobbying the government to support software engineering research. So it varies quite a bit from country to country, but what you can tell is that people are in general increasingly struggling to find funding and we are not as hot as fields such as nanotechnologies or bioinformatics, just to name a few. So, uh, and uh, another indicator is that we have a lot of talented young researchers with PhDs who are struggling to find positions, which was not the case in the 1990s in the early in the early years of this century. Uh, so if, if there little research, maybe this research has a big impact on uh, industry. How much transfer of that research do we see happening to the practitioners? Of course, it's, it's difficult to measure, but look, for example, we are at here, the flagship conference in software engineering. Look at the percentage of papers that report an actual industrial case study or that show any kind of evidence of collaboration with industry, you will see that that percentage is very small. I'm not talking about open source systems, okay, I'm talking about real industrial software. Uh, look at the number of participants from industry coming to ICSI. And again, I'm not referring to people working in corporate research centers, I'm referring to business units. <laughs> Uh, that percentage is 5% perhaps, yeah. max. Uh, so uh, there are many indicators that suggest a very limited interaction between uh, the software and engineering research community and uh, the various industry sectors that massively develop software, such as the automotive, aerospace, banking sectors, for example. You're speaking specifically about software engineering. Um, isn't it some kind of a confusion, both in academia and in the public, between computer science and software engineering? After all, software engineering is not just about no. writing code or proving code correct. No, uh, yeah, actually, this is a, a very good question. Historically, software engineering research is an offspring of computer science. I mean, the first software engineering research groups came about in computer science departments with computer scientists leading them. And that's to be expected. However, if you look at other engineering disciplines, uh, mechanical or aerospace engineering departments are not 
part of physics departments. Uh, environmental engineering is not part of chemistry departments. There is a difference between engineering disciplines and the sciences that, you know, on which those engineering disciplines rely on. Uh, and it's important to distinguish them because they follow to a large extent a different research paradigm. Research in engineering disciplines is strongly driven by uh, concrete problems and considerations of scalability and human factors when they matter, uh, practicality, uh, uh, economics considerations which are overarching. Uh, and this drives to a large extent engineering research. It doesn't in natural sciences. So uh, the problem when you when you manage software engineering research as a branch of computer science in academic institutions is that you apply or you, you create the expectation that software engineering researchers should conduct research and should be evaluated according to the same criteria as computer scientists. But that's not the case. It's an engineering discipline. It has to be, research has to be conducted according to an engineering paradigm and the results of research have to be evaluated uh, in terms of impact, or impact has to be uh, a very important evaluation criterion, like in all engineering disciplines. Mm -hmm. So is, it, yeah. is software engineering research actually suffering from some kind of you know, research under the lamppost? I do research there because I can publish there, not because there is some practical engineering application? Y yes, that's definitely the case, but I don't know to which extent this is very different. Disciplines. I, I just don't know. Um, I, uh, uh, what I've noticed, because in Canada I used to work in an engineering department, not a, a science faculty, and I had many engineering colleagues, and many of them really behaved like inventors. I mean, they were inventors, they, they built stuff. You know, <laughs> that was what they spent most of their time doing. You know. uh, and they would patent whatever they built work with public authorities or various industries. Yeah. Uh, and uh, of course in, uh, in software engineering we, we are evaluated like any other uh, computer science group in computer science departments. And in those disciplines of course uh, there is a pressure to publish as much as possible. So, uh, but to which extent we are different from other uh, disciplines of uh, other disciplines in computer science, for example, I cannot tell. Uh, I haven't done that investigation. But of course, we have that problem, and it's mostly due to the fact that uh, the impact of one's research is not granted much importance when people are being evaluated for tenure promotion. So, what's what's the way out? Is there any light at the end of the tunnel for software engineering research? Of course, there is no easy. Uh, solution, but, uh, and what I'm going to say is easier said than done, but I'm going to say it anyway. First, I think it's a mistake to maintain software engineering research within computer science departments. Something has to be done about that. Uh, of course, that's not the case everywhere. For example, you are not part of a computer science department, and when I was in Canada, I wasn't either, but most people are. Uh, I think, ideally, of course, usually in, in most universities you don't have enough software engineering faculty members to create a department. But what we could do, for example, is to create system engineering departments where the various people who contribute to building systems could come together. And that doesn't mean that software engineering researchers should not interact with their colleagues in computer science or should not collaborate with their colleagues in computer science. Of course, uh, people in electrical engineering uh, you know, make uh, you know ha happen to collaborate with their colleagues in physics departments. I mean, it's not uh, you know, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but software engineering must be part of an engineering department where research is managed according to an engineering paradigm. And so this is a possible compromise. Uh, another uh, another thing, of course, is to. is to, and this is very difficult, we have to, ourselves, the research community, change our mindsets. We have somehow to grow more appreciation for impact 
for people doing real stuff and real problems in real contexts. We have to grow an appreciation for the engineering side of software engineering. And there is nothing, you know, this is a noble activity. There is nothing wrong with that. Aren't we getting a lot of resistance from the practitioners, the large industry, who do not necessarily want academics to look over their shoulders and measure everything they can? In my experience, but that's my personal experience, is that when you listen to people in industry, when you show, when you pay real attention to what they say, their problems and their opinions, um, uh, usually they are very appreciative of collaborating with researchers, as long as they see that their problems are being addressed and paid attention to. Of course, you can you can be unlucky and have bad partners. I mean, you have to choose who you work with. But by and large, I have had many positive experiences when I work with industry, and I worked with industry uh, for the last 20 years. And uh, in the last five years, I spent at least 50 or 60 percent of my time working with industry, uh, trying to have impact. Uh, and uh, overall, my experience has been very positive. So my main problems has been have been with basically publishing that more applied side of my research in the academic community. This is where you know, I've had the most difficulties. So uh, the, my papers will appear in the most prestigious academic venues are usually academic papers. I have a lot of difficulties to publish the work I do with industry. And, you know, I've been reasonably successful publishing the best software engineering research venues. Uh, and I can recognize good research from my research to a reasonable extent. I may make mistakes like everybody, but I'm not entirely stupid. If a piece of work is really bad, I can see it. You know. And sometimes, the work I do with industry, I'm fundamentally convinced that it's good, and it's extremely difficult to publish. So I think the main problem is on the academic side, not on the engineering side. Even, uh, not on the sorry, not on the industrial side. Even though, of course, when working with industry, there are challenges that we can discuss if you want. So uh, you, you mentioned that your colleagues were happy to go around patenting things, but we seem to be limited at, as a venue with patenting. Software engineering ideas yes. are notably difficult to patent. Yes, yes. It may be even considered as absurd to try to patent software engineering. I agree. I agree. Inventions. I'm not saying that we should emulate what others do. I mean, we are different. Obviously, software engineering being is an engineering discipline, but it's a different engineering discipline than, say, chemical engineering. In our discipline, the human factor is much more important. We don't do manufacturing. We only do mostly design. Though we deploy software. Uh, and we configure software. So I guess deployment and configuration is our form of manufacturing. <laughs> but it's very different, obviously. Uh, so we are different. There is no question about it. And we have to find our own paradigm of research. But still, we are much closer to other engineering disciplines than we are to computer science. In terms of engineering, uh, in terms of sorry, research paradigm. Okay, thank you, Lionel. This was Lionel Briand at XA, interviewed by Philippe Kruchten. Thank you.